everyone. It's uh, Joe Lyons here from the Automator. And today I'm talking to Leo Davidson again from Directory Opus. And today we were talking, this got interesting because in our last call, we talked a little bit about creating buttons, but we didn't get into it. And it was one of those pet peeves of mine at, at TI, I would, or any corporate office, you know, where I've worked, I'd see people that use, let's say use Excel almost all day, right? That's all they do. And yet when they would go to do a functionality, they would have to go hunt through the stupid ribbon, you know, and click like five or six times to find what they want to do. And it was just, I'm like, just create a button, you know, and just it's it takes you like 10 seconds, create a button, you know, like I, I had a button to freeze paintings, I had a button to dedupe, I had a button, you know, for everything you do, it's so simple. So anyway, that was what I had asked Leo in the call last time, I think, you know, to, can you create them? And you said, yes, but we it, that wasn't the purpose of the video. So we didn't go into that. But um, yeah, you're going to show me today, right? Yes, that's the plan. Just show that in more detail. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to show a bit of <clears throat> So the basics of how how you can get into the toolbar, editing, like how how you actually edit a, a button, um, and I just want to show a few different types of buttons because there's you know there's, there's very simple ones and it gets more complex and and I'll, I'm not going to go into the the sort of nitty gritty details, but I'll, I'll show I'll show what can be done and cool. you know, people can then dig into it further or maybe we, if people want we can do another video that goes more into things. Um, yeah. <laughs> Plan. Awesome. Um, so you want to go ahead and share your screen and we'll start yeah. so, having some fun? So the first thing I'm going to do before I start editing things, I'm going to back up my config just as a, mm, great, just a good idea. Great anyway. tip. You, Absolutely. Yeah. If you mess something up, you've always yep. got the backup. And I'm also going to use this backup later. So I'm just going to do start. You, you know, it's actually a great point of even if you, you're just not sure you want to do it, you, this is a way to test it, right? You can do all the stuff. Yeah. Do whatever you want. You know what? I don't like it. I'm just going to revert to that earlier version. Yeah, back, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did that through sort of settings back up and restore. You, you can also, I mean, all, all the config files, uh, if you type in, I should probably explain what I'm doing here. If you type slash, you get a list of aliases on the screen. Cool. Um, and these are, you can add your own, but there's a load of built in ones. And if you do type as data, that's your main config folder. Um, and we, we try and keep all the config in files. There's one or two things that will go into the registry unless you're on a USB or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but this means you see, you can also just go in here and. Okay. And copy yeah. The all right. Copy the folder. All right. There are some other settings in other folders, but they're less important, like the uh, recent directories and things like that. Stuff so you wouldn't need to back up and at least not normally. Uh, right. So I've done that. Yeah. The first thing I want to do, because <laughs> this is something that. The one thing that I don't like about our default config is there's no button to go straight to the desktop. I mean, I've got the tree on here, so, I, you know, I can click that. But I would, myself, normally, I run with the tree turned off. And I want to get to, you know, you're in a you're in a random folder. And I want to get to the desktop quickly all the time. That's, you know, that's where I keep my Grr. stuff I'm working on. And, you know, I mean, there are various ways that you can click on there and desktop, but it's a little bit fiddly. So I like to just put a button here. And you can, you can add a favorite as well. I and mean, there's, there's so many ways you can go to a folder. But it's, uh, so, no, no, I'm <laughs> going too quickly here. So one, one way you can customize the toolbars, if you right click on the, just an empty space on one of the toolbars, and you can click customize there, that'll open up the, the editor. You can also go settings, customize toolbars, you know, whichever's oh, easier okay. for you. Yep. <clears throat> so I'm just going to right click on the, I want to put it onto this file display toolbar. And this toolbar is special because if you open up a dual display, you'll get a second copy of it. Um, and, all, and all the buttons will only work on that side. So buttons up here on the normal toolbars, you click those and they would go onto the whichever side is source, the active side. Buttons over here, you don't have to worry about which one's source and which one's destination. Right. So that, I'll, just, I'll just close that again because it just confuses things. So I'm going to do so. I right click on this empty space and do new new button. You can create other things, menus and things, but we won't go into that yet. Uh, and I want to put it up here. I'm going to right click it. And this, this is only one way you can do it, but I'm just going to do go past desktop. So des desktop's another alias that goes to your desktop folder. You don't have to worry about usernames and that kind of thing. So if you copy this configuration to another machine, it'll work even if the username's different. Um, I'll just give it a nice icon. So this, this is our built-in icon set. You can, you can use external icons as well. And these are, these are all sort of tagged with the names so you can filter and find the desktop one. Nice and easy. So now I've got this button here. If I'm in the if in whatever folder I'm in, I can just click that straight away. Get back to there. You can also, if you're in customized mode, you can also just drag a folder onto. Uh, onto oh there. man, yeah, and was, yeah, and then go back and change the icon because yeah, yeah, or, well, which is the other thing. 
It's so simple, right? But people don't change that icon picture. And yeah, I've seen I have seen uh, configs where people have got no labels on on this like fifty identical icons, and I'm thinking, how do you know which ones? Yeah, which you got to mouse over, wait for it to you know <laughs> show something. Yeah, yeah. It's a, um, I mean, in this case, I just you know add a label. Yeah, I don't want to keep that there, so let's get rid of that. And the other, so yeah, the other thing you can do is you can add a, um, a program in a similar way. Oops, Run files. Run files x six. Yeah. So if you wanted to, if you wanted a button to run a program. I think John may have shown this in the previous one, but just for completeness, I was, I'm going to stick this up. Uh, I don't know. I'll stick it there for now. So this opens a thing asking you how you want to run the program because different programs work in slightly different ways or I mean some, some programs you might want to send the selected files to them, some you might not. The defaults are probably uh, you, uh, yeah, you wouldn't want to send a folder to this, I don't think. But and you can you can test it out in this dialog as well, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna accept that and hopefully it'll work. So I've got this notepad plus plus button. If I then run it on select file and run that. I don't know, what? Open the What's happening there? <laughs> Let's have a look at it. That should work. What's going on here? Oh, sorry, I'm confused. It had a oh, right. Unless like code plus plus doesn't work that way. Yeah, so it didn't activate the tab yeah. for you because. Yeah, I think I don't know. I've, I've never actually used Notepad Plus Plus before. <laughs> it's just a convenient thing to install. Um, it must need some extra arguments to tell it what to open. Um, I am. If I change that to Notepad, it should work. <laughs> yeah, it always goes wrong in the demo, doesn't it? Right. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Okay. Look how simple this is, and then yeah, yeah, that should things go wrong. I'm not sure why that's not working? You know, it's it's one of the things that I get critiqued a lot. I have some Udemy courses, mm -hmm. and I get critiqued a lot because I'll leave stuff like this in my course because I'm like, look, you got to learn how to troubleshoot. You yeah. know, and and it's it happens to everybody, and anyone who thinks it doesn't is you know crazy. I mean, exactly, I go through this quite often. So here's an example. I wasn't I wasn't planning to do this, but here's an example of how. A quick way of uh, seeing what's going on. So I've changed it to. Oh, cool! Batch, which means it's going to run. It's going to run in a command prompt. And you yeah, can great. Through. Yeah, we um, can see it. And instead of running the command, it's going to echo what. Echo it. Yeah, works. yeah. Um, so we can see the commands that are actually sent. Yeah. So let's see what. See what I'm doing. That's weird. Why is that not working? <laughs> it's not passing the parameter for whatever reason. Looks like. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Ah, oh, okay. It was a there's only thing. Oh, <laughs> I picked. The, I meant to pick files only, and I picked uh, directories only. So it was filtering out. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let me, I'm going to delete this button, and then I'll start again. <laughs> so we now we've showed the wrong way to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll add Notepad plus plus. Yeah, and I'll check files only instead of files. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so cool. yeah, so they both start with F. It's an easy mistake. Um, yeah, so now if I run that, it should, yeah, there we go. It's opened up the file that I had selected. Um, and I think if nothing's selected, it will still run it. And it's remembering that that was open before, but it's not. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that, that's optional. You can you can change that code. Um, I won't go into this in too, too much detail, but if you put a dollar sign there, it means if it's just uh, on its own, it means you want, you want a file, but if there isn't one, it will just put nothing there at all. If you put a dollar sign there, it means it needs a file. Um, okay. And if there isn't a file selected, it won't run anything. Um, you don't have to remember all this. It's all in the uh, the menus here. So as you, when you have to remember right. what the difference between want and need is, but um, you don't have to remember all the yeah, different I understand. Right. Right. It's all put there for you. Um, yeah. So that, it's a bit a bit longer than I expected. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, no, yeah, we, like you know, we've learned how to how to fix that. Yeah. And another another really convenient thing. So. You, you'll probably be iterating through, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll put a button on there, you'll test it. It won't work quite right. You want to edit it again. And it's quite hassle to, you know, go customize, blah, 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 click on all those things. So there's an option in here. Should find it, I think. Yeah, that was on already. I, I must have turned it on earlier. I don't think it's on by default. 
Um, but yeah, alt click to edit toggle button. So if that is on, I'm holding, I'm holding down the alt key and I'm clicking on the button and it goes straight into the editor. Oh, so that's awesome. Quickly make some yeah. changes, click OK. And you can also run things in the editor. So if I select the file and click run, it'll, you can test the command that way. Oh, cool. Okay. So yeah, there are lots of different ways to do it. Uh, one, one hint about that, if you're doing that, you probably want to put in uh, no, where is it? No deselect. Uh, where's it gone? I'll just type it in. No deselect. <laughs> is that what you said? I saw it over there. Anyway, yeah. Um, so that'll, that'll make it so when you run the thing, the file will stay selected. Uh, it's a bit hard to see in my color scheme, but it's still selected there. And otherwise, every time you run it, you have to go back and forth and select the file again. Yeah, so we've looked at the sort of top level. So uh, one stupid use of this mm -hmm. is, let's say, like a CSV file. That sometimes you want to open it in Notepad or Notepad++, plus plus, and sometimes you want to open it in Excel. Right. This is a great easy way to say, hey, I have now I have an easy way to al have an alternative to what the yeah. default is. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So it doesn't have to be the default. That. And, and in fact, you can put the, you can drag the file itself onto the toolbar and clicking that button would be like double clicking the file. Um, uh -huh. So it would then look like a quick launch to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, but yeah, it's, it's an easy way to, so like if you if had a, a hex editor or something like that, if you want to like, expect things at the binary level, um, it's a nice thing to have. Definitely, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so it looks at buttons on the top level, but all, everything in the, uh, all of the menus as well are the same thing, so I can edit any of these like that. That's just a button that does that. Is there an easy way to take one of those items from your menu and bring that up to the, you know, actually drag it to the toolbar, or do you have to go yeah. reconstruct it? Okay. Yeah, so if you say you wanted, um, uh, like the preferences button, uh -huh. Just hold down control, drag it across. I figured there would be. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Because that's, you know, you guys know what you're doing. You've created menu items of the most commonly used things. And, and this is where it's like, hey, if I'm using it that much, you know, yeah. put it on that front <clears throat> thing. that I don't have to go search for it. So awesome. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I do that sort of temporarily sometimes. Like if I find right. there's, there'll be one day where I keep going, like, menu, 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 item. I'll just copy that up to here. And then when I'm finished, delete it because you know you might not need it again after that day. But it'll certainly save you a lot of time. <laughs> um, it's it's actually one of the things you can move things yeah. as well, um, obviously. Um, cool. No, oh, okay. Also copy and paste. Um, nice. But yeah, the control drag is is the easiest, at least for me. But yeah, copy and paste. All, all what was that three buttons option? I'm just curious. It seems <laughs> it sounds weird. Three buttons is um, I don't we've we've gotten rid of most of the default ones because it's a, it's not very discoverable, but it is quite useful. So you can have um, like I'll look at this button. Uh, it opens the view. So this this toggles the viewer pane. Oh, another another thing I say: if you hold down Shift while while you're editing things, you click on them. They don't they don't run the command. But if you hold down Shift, they'll still run it. So this opens up the viewer pane, which. You know, displays the, the selected files. If I turn that into a three button, that's not letting me. Why is that? Oh, because I'm editing it, I think. Yeah, so I've turned that into a three button. You get this, when when you're in customize mode, you get this sort of menu here. And what this means is you can actually have oh, neat. things in there. And this that's is awesome. the left click, that's the right, or yeah, left, right, and middle click. So now I've got a button where- Wow, that's- thing, it does one thing. If I click that's, the right thing, does yeah. another. That's um, brilliant, man. That's that. awesome. Yeah. So I mean, it's really it's useful. It's useful for things that you make yourself because you know it's there. You right. Put it there. Um, right. Which is why I'm so excited. Much. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. so used to that. Yeah. That's yeah. That's I mean, awesome. It is. It's very powerful because um, it just it means you've got much less stuff, um, and you can also put right. sort of related things there. Like I, I don't right. Know if it's, uh, yeah. these, these things open a jewel of file displays, and sometimes I can't remember what it was, but on one of my, uh, for a while anyway, I, I didn't use it much in the end, but I had a sort of an alternative way to open a dual file display, maybe uh -huh. getting it, to, I can't remember what it was, but, but it, it was like two related commands. So I was like, the left click does the normal action, yeah. and the right click does a slightly different one. Um, yeah, I, but, I, you know, I, I teach, in auto hotkey, I teach people to use, the basic are like hotkeys and hot strings, and then people, you know, they, they don't understand. I'm like, I have hundreds of them. And the only way I can do that is by establishing patterns, you know, kind of because otherwise it's just, it's so hard. There's so many, but yeah. I'll create a pattern of like, oh, email will be your initials and an E. 
uh, for your, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, oh, okay, but that's the same concept of like one button that's related, you know, make it related yeah, yeah. in some way. It makes it so much easier to remember. The thing is, yeah, it'll work. It's just, can you remember it? And if you can't yeah, exactly, remember it, exactly. it's, it's defeated the purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you can, you can create so much, uh, so much sort of cool stuff that will, this will save me so much time. And then you, you forget it's even there sometimes. So it's, yeah, it is important to make it. Yeah. Like, I've actually, <laughs> I've, uh, I've gone in and said, Oh, you know what? I should automate this. Let me write a script. So I write the script and I go to save it. And because I'm very, particular and where I save stuff, I'll go to save it and I'm like, oh, I'll save it here. And I'll look and there's the damn thing I had already written the yeah. same thing before, you know, just I'm forgot. I had before, written. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. anyway. Yeah, that, that happens. It's like, oh, that was a good idea and it seems familiar. Oh, there it is. Right. <laughs> it's already. Right. And I even did a better job last time. No, um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. No. Yeah. yeah, that's very powerful. I mean, I guess speaking of hotkeys, I'll go into that. So, so each of these buttons can have a hotkey. Like if you wanted, oh, that's excellent. Try and pick one. This there's already a hotkey for this. So these the buttons up here are, are duplicates of things in here. So because um, you know you, you can't really you don't know what all these icons mean initially. So you can look in sure. here, um, and it's a bit more verbose. I mean, you, you can hover over it and it'll tell you. But okay, we we like to provide it and like an easy way to sort of digest what there is, and then here are the the commonly used stuff, if you can then edit, you know, because this command is in two places, we put the hotkey in this one. So there's an F7 hotkey on there, but you can change that and you can, you can add, I mean, you can have multiple hotkeys for the same thing as well. So oh, excellent. Add, oh, That's actually. awesome. Oh, and it's mainly used for things like, uh, like the location field. Um, there's a few different standards, like some programs use control L, some use F4, some use alt D. So oh. we just, we put them all there by default. So whatever you're used to, hopefully you'll, you well, I'll, to do it something. I'll tell you my use case, and it's probably different than what you're thinking, is I often have other people using my computer, and I, mm-hmm. I assign a hotkey for, for what makes sense to me, but then they have a different one that they're used to. So yeah. being able to have more than one is really, that, that's yeah. very helpful for yeah. them. Yeah, it's, it's handy. And you can also, let me see if I can remember how this works, because I don't use it much, but you can, you can have hotkey chords, which sounds like what you were saying before. So if you... Like say say you wanted this to be I don't know control. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to pick something that won't already be taken. <laughs> right. You can do control P and then add the sequence. I think yeah. So control P Q say that will mean that if I well I'm not going to try and work one. Right. Out. I understand. Yeah. Here for a bit. But that that will mean that to, to trigger that you do control P and then separately Q. So you can have uh, so multi level type thing. Yeah, I've, I've seen that in Visual Studio, yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm like, what the holy hell were these people <laughs> thinking? Like, you know, but they have like over a thousand hotkeys or something, and so that's why I realized yeah. like that's why they had to do that. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean there's the, there's only one in Visual Studio I use, which is the collapse and expand thing, and that is I can't remember what it is. If I if I was using it, I'd, it's sort of muscle memory, but right, I think it's only like right. Control M P or something. I don't know. But that's the, and that, and that sort of makes sense because it's like I want to do this thing and I want to collapse, or I want to do this thing and I want to expand. So it's like thing and then action. But to be honest, yeah, I never use it in my. Well, the, the, that's what I was going to say. Was look, here's the thing: if I'm using it enough, I'm going to assign a different hotkey to it because I can't exactly, yeah, remember yeah. that. So I, I think the problem is they want to have a hotkey for everything built in, mm. you know, and 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 that's why they went that route. But anyway, I, yeah, I think I, maybe it would make sense if you had like a I want to send an email. To this person, sort of thing. So, like, you've got. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Again, so with you, the, the pattern. Email. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. Maybe, maybe not a good example in a farm, that you can send emails in Opus, but it's not. It's uh, it's not very good at it, sort of thing. Because it's not an email program. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Um, but yeah, that kind of thing, like, say, so be one hotkey to send email. Well, um, let, let's say you'd, you'd probably you'd probably rather have press the hotkey and then get a menu of people which you can then select from. So I don't know. Uh-huh. It's not something I would use. <laughs> well, you, you might even have you know, a certain folder that you, you, you keep for backups of, of some mm-hmm. specific thing. And so yeah. anytime I select this file, and I hit this high, it's going to send it to that folder, uh, you know, as you know, and have different hotkey, different letters to represent different folders, maybe accounts, yeah. like for the type of things you work. Anyway. Yeah. 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 I guess, I mean, yeah. Cause I guess, I guess the good thing is that it means you've only got to find one hotkey that isn't in use and then you've got the whole keyboard to, right. to specify right. the, the secondary right. level of, but yeah, but as I say, it's not something I personally use, but you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's loads of stuff in Opus I don't use. It's uh, it's there for 
for whatever people want sort of thing. <laughs> so continue on, on hotkeys, you, so, you know, we've shown that they can be assigned to the buttons, but they can also be standalone. Um, so you can have buttons that don't have any hotkey, uh, sorry, hotkeys that don't have any button attached to them, like F2 is the key to, to start doing my own name. You can change that if you want. Uh, and this, this list separates. So the, the hotkeys are all the standalone ones. Toolbars are all the ones that are on buttons up there. And you can click on here and click the little glasses and it will locate that, that hotkey command in the toolbar for you. And there's also... I, I'm, I'm sorry, back up on that. Say that again. <laughs> uh, so okay. so the, the hotkeys category, these are standalone. So these, these hotkeys, are the, the only place you'd find them is here. Okay. Um, they, don't, they don't have any toolbar button associated okay. with them. Um, uh, you know, it's usually things that wouldn't make sense to click on because you, if you're using the mouse, you do it in a different way. But um, yeah. if, you, if you're using the keyboard, you'd want a command for it. And then there's the toolbar section. So this is, this is all the hotkeys from your toolbars that are, that are active, uh, that are open. Um, you, you, can also have, you can also have a toolbar where you say, keep the hotkeys for this toolbar active, but don't show it. Um, because we, we found a lot of people would hide this toolbar, the, the main one. Uh -huh. and this is the one where all the copy and paste commands are defined. <laughs> yeah. So people would turn that off thinking, I never use this. And then they'd, we'd get to that would be me. saying, I can't yeah, copy and paste that anymore. Been me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remove, like, in the context menu, I'm like, cut, yeah. copy, paste. I'm like, I, I always use the keyboard. I would never use yeah. a mouse for that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's not obvious because you, you think, I never use this, so I'll delete it. But then it, it, right. this is actually where that hotkey comes from. Interesting. Um, but so, yeah. one thing I got confused on though, because I thought you said you could you could click down below and it would show you up above. That was where I was like, yeah. wait. So for example, I find I, you can also filter down here. So if you want to find out what's on Control K, uh -huh. um, you can do that. And uh, this is a bit confusing. We're going to improve this, but you can when this is on, you you type a hotkey and it will show you the keys. And you can just do Control and it's all the keys that yeah. are Control. Just to clarify, because I I don't know what you're hitting. You're literally hitting Control K down there, right? Yes. You're not typing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things that sorry, yeah. I've seen some where you have to type it, and I'm like, how did they type control? I don't know if they spelled yeah, no, it. No, just, anyway. So, yeah, so in this mode, I'm literally just like, a, or if I push shift, it will show me all the keys involving the shift key. Awesome, good. Um, and if I do shift, uh, like shift F8, it'll just filter on that. But if you turn awesome. this off, you can also filter on these other columns. So if you want to say, oh, cool, okay. Not yeah. can, like, go up, it'll, it'll find the part oh. of that. Um, and it's a bit confusing because it's not, it's, it's yeah, too, I, I, too clear. It's that modal. We're going right. to change that, and I think we're going to have separate fields eventually. Uh huh. Because you know, there's plenty of space down there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the thing we were talking about before. Yeah. So if we want to, <clears throat> so Control K calculates folder sizes and gives you the the size of all your folders. That's in the edit menu. But if say you didn't know where that was coming from, because sometimes you you know you've got all these hotkeys like where I don't I don't remember that button being anywhere. Um, so you can just stack it and click on this. Uh, glasses icon, locate toolbar, and it will, yeah, it'll. Oh, it'll cool. Work. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> this is one of those things, and I don't know whoever wrote this realized, like, that right there will actually get people to remember it. Hmm. You know, because otherwise, you're like, control K, control K, <clears throat> but, but watching this, like, I could see how that would suddenly go, oh, there it is. All right. I get it. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. And you might find a, a command here you think that's useful, but I'll never remember the hotkey. But so where else can I get it? And it's like, okay, it's edit, and, you know, you yeah. you remember it that way, maybe. Uh, you know, depending on who you are. I guess while I'm here, you can also edit the context menus. So it's like, if I right click on the background, you get this this menu. Mm -hmm. um, or if I right click on here, you get this menu. I mean, those are all editable here. So like the column header, I'm like I never use the attributes column. I never care about that. I never care about the excess times. So that you know, clean that up. These are just your uh, your sort of quick things. So you can, you know. It, again, it, it's kind of like I said earlier, people, I customize mine a lot and most people don't ever even bother. And then they get mad when something's not there. And I'm like, <laughs> freaking put it in there. <laughs> yeah. Or like you said, there's 8 million things in there that I never use. Get rid of them, you know, yeah. clear up the clutter or, you know, possibly yeah. if you can't assign an icon, which is also when that's, I don't know if I, I think I saw in some other ones. Did you have icons and in, in some of them and not others? Yeah. But, yeah. You can, you can add icons, all of these. Um, okay. I used to go in and do that, and I, I, I stopped because it's just so much hassle. <laughs> it, it takes it, a little it sort time, of but things up a bit. Yeah, uh, but for your menu, most frequently used ones, it it yeah. really helps because then you just stop reading and you can jump to it, you know, so mm. quickly. And I guess another thing you can do is you can color things. So, uh, I mean, oh, cool. Okay. 
So say yeah, that alone. So you use that a lot. You can uh, you can set the colors here. So. Nice. Oh, that's see that alone would for me would be yeah. I can I can change the the big ones that I use very frequently. Yeah. So you can sort yeah. of highlight that. Um, I guess uh, probably worth mentioning. So if you mess up your toolbars, you can factory reset the. If you're editing one of the factory toolbars, you can just reset it, and that will get you back to the defaults. Um, so, so the more important question is. How do we get you guys to to fix all the office programs to, to have these options? <laughs> yeah, because some things we can't do. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, man, yeah, I, it, 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 <laughs> it drives me nuts. All the stuff that it, like I used to love Excel; it was a great program. Mm. And then they make to me these asinine choices, and and now I almost hate it. Like it, there's so yeah. many things I don't like about it. But anyway, well, they yeah. seem to be moving away from the ribbon themselves because they're. I yeah, I read that. Yeah. Windows 11 doesn't have a ribbon anymore, does it? It's just a, a fairly uh, yeah. traditional toolbar again. So. Which, which I'm all over. I mean, I use the classic shell. Uh, mm. I think that's what it's called for the getting the old style, you know, toolbars for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but, and I'm, I'm, until they allowed you, because at first when the ribbon came out, you couldn't customize it at all, right? Mm. And that drove me yeah. batty. And then, then they gave you the little toolbar, you know, <clears> thing <throat> you can customize. Then they allowed you to customize the ribbon, which, you know, thank God, but yeah. Yeah. And then they got rid of it. Yeah. 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 They, 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 keep, they give things and then they take it away. They can't. Right. Make it. Their minds what they're doing. Um, yeah, I mean, we've we've been asked to do ribbons, and you, you can you can do something like a ribbon here because you can have commands that will turn on and off toolbars. And it's not on here, but I've, in my normal setup, I've got, if I've got a, like a control and then the top left key next to one, depends what what locale you're in. But that's you well, know, it's, it's an easy to press thing, but nothing else uses it, and that will that will toggle on this, this toolbar down the side. I've just got a load of test buttons. Like here's my here's my test script that I can mess around with. Here's a button that does. Uh, one or two things that I keep having to go back to and tweak slightly to test different things. Um, mm -hmm. So, you, and you could have a you could have like a menu at the top that turned on one toolbar and turned off all the others if you wanted. Uh, uh -huh. To act sort of like a ribbon, but uh, people ask for it and then they say, we say, well, you can do it, and then they don't want it enough to do right. it. It's like, right? Do you really want that? Then I don't right. sure. <laughs> well, you know, and, it, and it's one of those things to me that like I thought I actually owned I hate the ribbon dot com for a while because I it drove me nuts. <laughs> But I realized the concept is sound. It's basically a context yeah, yeah, yeah. menu, you know, for your for your buttons, right? I yeah. mean, it's for your menus. Yeah, but the problem was, whoever thought up the things that got put in there and the order mm -hmm. of them was yeah, yeah. not, you know, they went overboard and only, well, we can only have this one item in this one place. And, yeah. you know, and it was just, it really messed with everything I did. And, yeah, because you're always flicking between... Like it's, yeah. it's nice to say, like say, if you're doing a lot of renames, like in Opus, if we have got a, you know, you've got the fancy rename dialog, um, uh -huh. but, if, but you can have presets that you've defined, and you can go in here. And, oh, and if cool. you're doing, if you're doing like fifty of those in a row, yeah, it might be a hassle to keep opening that up, and maybe you'd want to. But you could just put that on the toolbar. You can, right. you can literally put this list on a toolbar, stick right. it on the side, and turn it on when you want it, and then turn it off when you don't. Um, well, and, and even then, you could at least for your some of them, you could put in the three buttons, right? And yeah, yeah, very you quickly. Can put them wherever you want. Um, yeah. And and why why if you if you're doing the renaming, why would you want to hide all the other stuff? Uh, right. You're doing that, like <laughs> it should right. be mutually exclusive. Yeah. Or I have to right. go to a certain view to see that rename. I mean, that's yeah. Yeah. It's, it just it doesn't down. make a lot of sense. I mean, I, but yeah, there are. I think it's nice. It's sort of nice. It's one of those things that's like it's nice. It makes certain easy things a bit easier, but it makes anything complex even harder. And there's a lot of things like that. And I, I'm not a fan sort of thing. Like if if I, I, I'm not against making easy things easier. Um, you know, make everything easier as easy as you can. Right. But but it shouldn't then get in the way of doing more complex stuff. Um, well, you, you know, and here's the the interesting part, and and. Um, I'm curious on your thoughts on this. I think in general, Microsoft's beliefs and the world's belief kind of is like, you know, people, I don't, I'm not going to say getting dumber, but they're getting less and less, you know, knowledgeable of how to use a computer. Yeah, It's kind of like the whole, you know, really, if you think about it, Android versus iPhone. You know, iPhone decides how they're going to make the perfect phone for you and you can't really customize it versus Android's like, Screw it. You figure, you know, do what you want. Yeah. Um, and if you want exactly what Android, uh, what iOS gives you, it's fantastic. But if you want right. something slightly different, you're out of luck. Yeah. You can't, you can't, yeah. you've got no choice sort of thing. Like, yeah. 
I mean, and it's, it probably is great for the majority of people. I mean, there's more and more people using computers, and that, that obviously means there's less, fewer and fewer percentage are, are very technical. Um, well, yeah. But there's still a hell of a lot of technical people, and they're not being served very well by by most of these companies because they're just focusing on the, the biggest group of people who are the non-technical people. Um, I, yeah. I yeah, tell them, <laughs> when I was starting a job, I would tell them, look, I need a day to configure my computer. And they're thinking, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, no, I customize it so much. It takes me like a day to get it yeah. set up. But then when I'm good to go, I'm so much more efficient than mm-hmm. other people because, it, you know, it's actually optimized for, for me, you know. But yeah. It, yeah, and yet, yeah, yeah. And now, and now for the rest of the time I'm working for them, I'm more efficient. Yeah. You know, it's like you lose a day. Like, trust me, it's, it's worth it. It's, yeah. And that's sort of a nice, like some of the, some of the things you can configure in Opus, they might not really involve Opus. You're just pressing a hotkey and it runs some other program. Uh-huh. Um, but the nice thing is that you can then export that config, load it into another machine and you've got your setup there. Um, yeah. Cool. So you don't, you, I know, so you've got to install Opus. That's one tool, but you don't necessarily have to install. And a separate hotkey tool, uh, although you might still want to, you know, all, every tool has its own little niche. Um, so help me understand that now, actually, because I, I don't think this is what you were saying, but um, hmm? you would, when you export, you would be exporting all of your settings. Is that correct? You're not exporting. Yeah. A well, you can, you can choose to a degree, like you can okay. move back up. Um, and you can choose the like, images, sound, miscellaneous. I think it, it will always include all your toolbars. Um, but you can also just copy the tool, like, like I was showing before, if you go to Dopus Data, uh, and then there's a buttons folder, and all your toolbars are, are these files. Oh, okay. Um, all right. And so if you really how... wanted to, I mean, they, they're just XML, so. Right. And you can, I mean, we don't recommend you edit them because if you make something, if you make a mistake, then it's not going to yeah. load. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know, but. Hey, but you got to know what you're doing. Yeah. 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 And sometimes it's good because you, like, if you want to search and replace them, on a path. I mean, you can avoid hard coding paths by using those aliases because you can add your own alias. But if you didn't think to do that, you might have 50 different config files all referencing like folder X and you now need it to be folder Y. Um, you could just do a search and replace across right. all the text files. Um, right. So, you know, it's, it can, can be useful. And again, so that, that's reminded me about the hotkeys. Uh, Cause we were talking about sort of separate hotkey programs. So you, you can have these system wide ones. Um, and this means as long as Opus is running, yeah, you can push okay. this hotkey in any program. Um, I mean, the only default one is WinShift D. So, like, say I'm in, say I'm in uh, Notepad Plus Plus. If I do, so I'm holding down Windows, Shift and E, that will open an Opus window. Um, but you can make that do anything. So, it wouldn't even have to run Opus. You could have a hotkey anywhere that would open, you know, Notepad Plus Plus or. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when I first installed, um, like I said, I used it like. 20 years ago or roughly mm-hmm. somewhere there. And then I, I just started using it again. After I installed it, I thought, even though I didn't tell it to run every time when <clears> Windows <throat> started, there was still some sort of a service or something that looked like it was now there. Yeah, but- it'll, it'll run in the background by default. You can turn that off okay. uh, under so launching Opus uh, startup. Yeah, so that, that is on by default. Um, it's there for two reasons. One is it just makes it so you can just instantly, like, I've, I've got the desktop double click on, you can just instantly open a window. Um, and if, like, if I quit the program, uh, oops, there. it takes, you know, it takes, it's not slow, but it takes a second or two, which is a bit slower than just double clicking sure. to. Well, but the, the other reason is for those system wide hotkeys. So, if, okay. Because they only work while it's running. Yeah, it's up to you if you don't want, if you don't want it yeah. until you're actually using it, you can turn that off. Um, there's also an option to close the program when you, when the window closes. So you yeah. can see down here, there's a tray icon. I'll turn that right. on. That should go away. Yeah. Yeah. No. This this may show just how old I am, but when um, <laughs> IE, if I remember this right, man, it was so long ago. IE first came out. You know, it was comp- competing against Netscape mainly, and <laughs> they were showing how fast IE was. Um, yeah. And it was really because they were preloading it. You it know, was Microsoft it, yeah. built it in, yeah. and it's like, oh, look how fast it opens. Like it's it's because yeah. you launch it at startup. Yeah, it's just hidden. And I think yeah. I think it makes sense for some programs, but it's it should it's sure. up to the user. I mean, it depends if you don't right. because it, for me, I'm I'm constantly opening and closing. Right. Uh, oh, I'm in. Some, yeah, Explorer all the time. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, but, but other people they'll open it and they'll keep that one window and they'll. Cause I, I mean, you can you know you can open lots of tabs. Some people have got all the windows open in tabs, and they've only ever got one window open and it stays open. Um, I'm I'm not like that. I I, I 
I use tabs a little bit, but not all the time. Um, yeah, but the dual like display, the that's you being able to display more than one folder. And I love, actually, because after I was playing with it this morning, mm-hmm. and that you can choose whether it's a horizontal or vertical, you know, and, and mm-hmm. I'm like, it, until I clicked it and I saw it, I'm like, oh, now that I will leave up all the time. Like, I don't know why for me, I didn't want them side by side, but this way is like, to me, absolutely. I, yeah. I'd, I'd love to have a second one there. Yeah. I mean, and you can also have a, so by default, the tree is shared. So you've got one tree and, oh yeah, that's down there. Oh, okay. Um, but you can, you can have a separate tree for each side if you want. It's up to you. Now, this is what, now you can adjust it with Explorer. There's a setting you can change. But as you navigate inside Opus in a, in a file folder, the tree is updated. Is that right? By default? That's right, or? yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Which, well, by default, you can, but if you click on this lock, uh, it will no longer follow you. So Yeah, like which, I, like, that's the default for Explorer. And I'm like, I don't understand who, yeah. would, you know, <laughs> like, the point I find it. Like, so it's confusing when it's not updated. Piece, yeah. 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 It... Yeah. I mean, it's, they've, I think they've, I think their idea is that the tree is just the starting point and you, you'd select somewhere and then drill down from there, but not want it to change. And I don't, yeah, that's something because we've got a favorites menu here. If you want, I mean, I haven't, I haven't added any favorites, but I, if I want to jump to a place, I think that's a lot more logical oh. than having. Agreed. Like right. the tree for it, or right. you can you can also. I mean, we've seen you can put uh, folder icons there, or you can have a a toolbar on the side. Uh, quickly demo that. Oh, I should turn on the the drives one. Um, so you could have a, a toolbar. But where's on the, the bone? Sort of, uh, Where are the broken drives? Uh, as so as fixed, <laughs> the fixed drives are like hard drive, or the I think I think yeah. it's just hard drives. Yeah. Okay. And now there's a like optical and floppy drives a oh, long time ago. <laughs> well, I, um, you'll laugh, but if you looked at my computer, you'll see I have a B drive, and it's basically because I use Dropbox so much. I created a drive that looks like you know, but it's really my Dropbox drive, oh, yeah. and that way, it's it's just everything is under it. But yeah, yeah, I did have a floppy until quite well until about five years ago, um, and the only reason I had it was to find bugs in Opus that. Involved because oh, like, yeah. floppies are weird. You, you access them and they click. So if you, like if any other device, you, you say, "Is there anything there?" Right. Nothing happens. You access right. a floppy and it goes right. click. And we used to have right. this bug where every so often you'd be running Opus and it would go, the machine PC would go click, click, click. So I've always, until recently, and it's, it's just irrelevant now because nobody has a floppy. But until recently, I still kept one in my machine just to. No, I have a portable one again. that I could plug in. Um, my <laughs> wife was yeah, when we moved yeah. the other day. I saw it. My wife's like, "What is that for?" And I'm like, it's "Just in <laughs> case, you know." You, yeah. Um, the, the drive thing is nice because it will um, so you can have this list of drive buttons, you know, anywhere you want. Um, this this is a virtual machine, so it's only got one drive, but you, 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 it'll automatically add. So if you if I plugged in a USB stick, you get an icon for that up here, uh-huh. and you could click straight to it. But I mean, you can you know you can go into this PC or whatever and do the same thing, but it's just a bit more convenient uh, if you do that a lot. Yeah, and close well, that you, window and open a fresh one. <laughs> you know what? Let me let me quickly share my desktop. Mm-hmm. I want to show you. I don't know if if we we did this before, but let me let me explain. Let me quickly share my desktop. Mm-hmm. I want to show you. I don't know if, if we we did this before, but let me let me explain um, what what I do on mine. Uh, you'll I think you'll appreciate this. So sure. I I I and I've done this for like twenty years, right? I have my taskbar, you know, vertical mm-hmm. up here. These are shortcuts to uh, launching programs, yeah. but down here, these are all mm-hmm. folders. And mm-hmm. which we were saying mm-hmm. earlier is I have you know I assign an icon to a given folder. Yeah. Right. So these are the folders I'm in all the time and it's so easy to add them. Right. But it's super helpful to have them, you know, at, so at a, a, yeah, they're right there. Yeah. And, and it's, um, yeah, because you get that muscle memory. Yeah. If you think I want this folder, it's there. It's there. It's, you don't have to open a menu. You don't have to do anything. It's right, right there. Yeah. I, I can totally understand that. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, was there anything else you wanted to share on? Um, yeah, yeah, we've got we've got a yeah, few sorry. more things uh, if cool. we have time. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so I have to share my screen again. Yes, you do. Sorry, yeah, that's no problem. So yeah, let me uh, quickly. So we've seen we've seen this simple button up here, which just runs sort of one internal command, and, we, and we've seen ones that run external things. 
Um, you can also do a little bit of, so there's the simple scripting and there's complex scripting. So an example here is the copy files button. So I've got this key down thing that's saying if, if no key is held down when you click the button, it will just run the copy, which copies things from the, the source to the destination side, mm -hmm. you know, left to right. If you hold down shift, it'll do copy as. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll quickly I'll copy in here and not. So I'm holding the shift key down, clicking copy, and it's going to ask me what, what name I want for that file. Cool. So I can rename it as I'm copying it. If I mean, it, didn't, it doesn't really make sense here, but if you had multiple files selected, you could stay. Okay. Right, right. We'll do that. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, oh yeah, there's also, so the rename button, if I click this, it opens the sort of the advanced rename dialog. And that, this is the one we think most people will probably want to use. If, if you're doing a simple rename, you just do it straight in here. But there is a simple, you can click on that and you can do a simple rename, which is a bit like that dialog we were just, and this is actually implemented in here. So this, this command, there are variables in Opus. They're, they're fairly simple. It's not like a full scripting language. Well, there is a, there, you can do full scripting as well. These are, there's a sort of on top of that or simplified, I guess you could say. So this, this is saying if, if the variable, I'm sorry, this, this defines when it, when the button is selected. I mean, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the meat of it is it's saying if the variable is already set, then clear it, otherwise set it. And then the rename button checks that variable. If it's set, it'll run rename simple. And if it's not set, it'll run, run rename advanced. Okay. Um, so you can, you can have, basically you can have buttons that will change, change the state of what other things do. Um, and then I should also say these, so these commands, you don't have to remember all of this, all the arguments. So yeah, I, I figured. Menu, um, which helps quite a lot. <laughs> Otherwise you'd have to be constantly going into the manual. We need to like, right. remember all of those things. So I remember a few of them, but not. <laughs> and I don't know, it, this, this may be a big ask, but mm -hmm. what I've done in tools where, where it's really like with my texting, uh, and I have variables that are available is as you're typing, it'll offer them up in a list mm. uh, and, and it's, it's very helpful to, then I don't even yeah. have to go look for it. Right. It's yeah. We, we don't have that yet, but we are thinking about it. It's, it's kind of, it's not trivial, but it is a, it is a good yeah, idea. I totally it's, understand. Yeah. yeah it is. On yeah, I, cause, cause I didn't even do it. My, my employee <laughs> did it for me and, and I'm like, <laughs> Holy hell. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, it took me a little while to figure that one out. But yeah, but it, it is so useful because yeah, you just, yeah. you can, you don't have to go from the mouse to the keyboard. You just type things and yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's similar to the command completion, like that kind of thing. It's right. just so much easier. Yeah. Keeps you menu. in your environment. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a, I'll touch on, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I'll touch on scripting a little bit. So that, so that was, we, we did, what, we, what I just showed, we don't call scripting, although maybe technically it is, you know, it's got, it's got if then else statements, is that scripting? We, we don't call it scripting because we've got something that, something else we call scripting, I guess I'd say. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'll make a new button, click into advanced mode, which gives you the, in simple mode, it's a people who maybe you know, don't, you know, they're not as advanced, I guess that's the best way of putting it. So right. I think simple mode is sort of one, one line commands. It's, it's the Forrest it. Gump, you know, version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost <laughs> the same, um, but it's, and if, if you set the start into to a folder and then click on advanced, it will convert that into the actual command that, that does that for you. Okay. But yeah, that's, that's sort of beside the point. So if I set it to script mode. Um, I, there's also WSL for the uh, Windows Linux stuff. I'm not going to go into that because I haven't really used it much sure. and I don't have it installed. But if I do a script button, that'll load up this default script. And we're in, in BB scripts, I'll switch it to J scripts. The default script we've provided, you can you can overwrite this, you can delete it, you can save your own, so you can put in your whatever. If you if you commonly use some snippets or if you want to put yep. if you want to add some some notes about stuff that you keep forgetting, you can stick them in here and then save over it so cool. every time you create a new button you'll get this so this one by default it'll if i click on some folders and run it it'll it'll sort of tell you what's selected and it'll it sort of demonstrate how to do a list directory listing and a few other things yeah you can i mean obviously you can just delete all of this and do what you want so that's that's a script directly in, inside of a button which is great if if that button or you can also be in a hotkey but if it's great if you only want to run that from one place in one way but sometimes you might want to have something that you run in lots of different ways. And to do that, we use, you can have a script add-in, 
what's the best way to demonstrate it? Yeah, so there's two ways. So this is a simple script item, which is just a JavaScript file. And this one is actually a, a script package. And it's really a zip file. Um, you can go inside there and there's a, there's a script and there's some icons. So the, the reason it's a package is so that it can provide these icons. Well, no other reason. It's not, it's not to hide anything because you can just rename it .zip. There's a couple of ways you can install these. Go into toolbar, toolbar scripts and just drag it on there. That will install it. You can also go to scripts, and just drop, the, drop the file in the folder and that will work as well. So, so one of these scripts is this beyond compare one. Um, and I, I think I talked about this last time. It's like I, I showed before, you can have a simple button that runs a command, uh, you know, an external program on a selected file. But sometimes it's more complicated than that. Like if you want to run a comparison tool, a different tool, uh, you need it to run on something on the left and something on the right. And you can do that with the, you, we do have command uh, arguments to say left file, right file. But sometimes like with this, well, it's probably easy if I just show you. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so sometimes it really is, yeah. <laughs> so this is a button that runs that command. Um, it's going to make it, let's give it a large icon as well, make it nice and big. Let's stick over here. So, so, okay. So let me let me do another config backup because uh, this will demonstrate. This will give us something that we can compare. It's not done my documents here. So the, these config backups again, they're really zip files. So if you ever need to dig into them, like if you don't want to just restore one thing, but you think, oh, I messed up this one toolbar. I have a backup. I don't want to restore all the other stuff because that will overwrite my other things. Uh -huh. uh, you can just rename this as .zip. Um, and I'm just going to extract that. Uh, I shouldn't put it there. <laughs> going to extract that uh, to there. Yeah. So that so that's the that's the backup I just made. Um, and I'll take another backup that I made uh, much earlier. Rename it. Yeah. So you can piecemeal go through. Yeah. Just the Pacific. Yeah. Just the bits that you want. Um, but really, I just wanted a bunch of text files so I could compare. Really. Right. So if I've got I've got nothing selected now, if I click on the compare button, it's going to run beyond compare against those two folders. Um, so I can now go, I can now drill down and say, okay, I change this. Um, that file's changed. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but if I so I go into I'll turn on navigation lock as well. So that means if I'm going to a folder on the left. It goes into oh, cool. the folder, right. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's a file that's changed. So if I want to, if I want to compare the drives, the drives for, <laughs> keep forgetting you can't see my hand, but I'm pointing at the drive. So if I want to compare this and this, I, yeah. with this button, there's a few different versions of this button that different people have posted on the forum. Um, but with this version, if I just select the drives on the, on the left and click there, it will automatically find the same file name on the right. Um, and compare cool. against that. Uh, but if I if I wanted to, like, say this was called drive stop, so the files don't match. Uh huh. Um, I can also select that, select that. Oh, okay. Cool. Compare and it will compare those two files. Um, all right. So it's really versatile. I mean, I use this all the time for for checking code changes and that kind of thing. And the other thing you can do, so say the files were both in the same folder. If I select the two files here, click on there, it will compare those two. So this, the other side doesn't even have to be there now. Well, I'm sorry. What, let me, what is this compare is actually still Opus? Is that? No, no, correct? no, this is, this is beyond compare. So this is a completely separate program. I'm um, sorry. Okay. I, yeah, all sorry, right. I, have, I, I saw the name of it, but I, I just thought it was naming your script or something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. So this is, this is a separate program. Um, cool. so Opus can compare two folders. Going to. The other one of those. Um, that's in the desktop, I think. Yeah. So Opus does have a sync tool. Yeah, it's synchronized. Um, so that, yeah. So that will, that will tell us what's different on each side and offer to to combine the two or, or to do a one way a one way update. But it doesn't have any kind of comparison tool, so there's no way to to say show me the differences between these two individual files, which like this. Uh, and I, you know, I find horses for courses that the, the Opus Sync tool is, is great for simple stuff, but if you want to do a really complex, huge directory comparison, Beyond Compare is a, a better tool. I'm not, I'm not afraid to admit that because, you know, they they focus on that. That's their one job uh, to compare folders and files. 
So there's no reason to, you know, you're not, you're not, if you're using Opus, you're not stuck using Opus. You can, you know, create a button that quickly launches some other command. The only other thing I wanted to mention, because of, just because we were touching on scripts, um, I also put in this max size column script. And this is, this is a fairly, well, it's fairly, it's fairly long winded because it repeats itself because it does a lot of columns, but it's a fairly simple script that will, uh, it'll go through, um, all the directories. And it will work out the maximum size of a file below that folder or the average size. Uh -huh. um, so oh, interesting. Okay. Scripts, max size, average size. So, so that is the average. I mean, it's useful for things like, you know, if you've got a bunch of different videos, but they're all in different bit rates, you can say, well, which ones are taking up the most space? You can turn this on and say, okay, these, like this set of videos, they're taking up a lot more space on average than this, and then these other ones. And, you know, and it's, I think I put in a, I think it has a config. Yeah, so this, this, you can have a configuration in the scripts as well. It's fairly simple. Um, and this, this says ignore any file that's less than five megabytes. So it doesn't mess up the averages and with lots of small sort of text files and things. Yeah. I mean, the, the details of the scripts themselves are, you know, we could, we could speak for days about those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Things that, yeah. I mean, that's, that was, that was everything I planned to show. And yeah, hopefully that's cool. uh, made things a bit. They flesh them out a bit about what you can do. Yeah, which is you know a lot, yeah. which is awesome. Don't get me wrong; I don't mean that in yeah. a sarcastic way. That's yeah, no, a, there's, there's a lot of highly, <laughs> yeah, highly customizable tool that yeah. You know, I was gonna, I was looking at this and then I was going to say, you know, it gets to a point where you think about it. Usually, I'm disappointed in the tool because. I'm much smarter than the tools. You know what I mean? <laughs> and here at times it's like, God, I got to level up to be able to use this tool. You know, like the, if you really want to take it to the tens, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, um, if you want to do X, you probably can, right? Is what it looks like. Yeah. Well, there's amazing. still some things that can't do. People get sort of offended when they, they think of an idea. I'm like, I thought Opus could do everything. Right. Why can't I do this? And like, well, we haven't, we haven't thought of everything and not everything's been suggested and not everything can be done, but there's a lot of, I mean, our, our to-do list is like, we've got stuff we could be doing for the next 10 years. Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Lots of good ideas, but you know, there's only, there's only sort of three of us. So. Well, in, <laughs> you know, I, I'm actually, I have a podcast planned with, with my buddy to um, talk about, you know, what's better to, to, should you be adding as much functionality as you can mm -hmm. to your tools? Uh, and, and I think what really, and, and actually like from this call with you, I'm thinking about going, I think there's just different types of tools. Some yeah. tools you do, you know, your audience wants to dig in there and <laughs> learn every bit. And for those, yes, yeah. you add everything you possibly can. And then there's other ones where you're like, no, I want the simplest thing. You know, this isn't <laughs> something they're going to be using forever and all this different stuff. Make it super simple um, yeah. and, and keep it clean and, and yeah. Yeah, because because the more things you can change, the more you can mess them up as well. I mean, a lot a lot of sure. our support requests are this has stopped working. I don't know why. What happened? And it, and it turns out, you know, they've gone in and they've changed the right. system. They didn't know about it, and the week right. later, it's, and I can so I can sort of understand why. Like uh, well, things like Chrome, they hide away all the settings in that uh, Chrome yeah. flags page. I mean, the, there are some in the yeah. UI, but they, and I can sort of understand that. But but we're not that kind of tool. We are. We're going to give you a gun, and if you shoot your foot off with it, we'll try right. and help, sort of thing. But but we're not going right. to we're not going to nerf that gun. We're going to you know we're well, give you. And, and here's the um, the thing, and I don't know who is strategically done, or just because, like you said, it's just good practice. Is we started off with you backing up your settings, yeah. right? And that's you know <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's just a really idea. yeah right. I when I this is I don't do it so much anymore, but years ago for for years and years for twenty years, anytime I would touch the registry. I would create a backup first. I'm like, you know yeah. what? It's just not worth it. Now I'm I'm a little more risky, but yeah. not much. You know, <laughs> if I do anything big, I'm like, you know what? It's just it's not worth it. I used to I used to have a, an incremental backup every night of my PC, so if anything went wrong, I could go back to that. But the, I still think it's a good idea. But the backup tools, every single time I'd choose a backup tool, and that one would become rubbish, and then another. Right? One yeah. Oh, I totally agree. Things. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why, but they. Yeah. I, mean, I, I had pretty particular needs, so maybe it's maybe it's me as well. <laughs> well, I, I used to have a, what was it? I think it was Ghost is the program I used. Mm, but yeah, I would, I I would install that. my everything and then take a snapshot of it. Yeah. And it was awesome because I could revert. But now yeah. I go years without, you know, reformatting my computer just because it's, <clears> it's, Windows has gotten much better, you know, and, yeah. and most programs too. So and I think we've rare. also got more into 
like all, all my important stuff is is in the is in a cloud of some sort. Like the, the source code is in a, in a right. version control server, so I could probably lose my. I mean, if I lost my PC, it would be it would be a pain, right. but it wouldn't I wouldn't have lost any work, sort of thing. Right. That's that's why I, I work from that B drive, and everything I do is yeah. even now. I even put my desktop under drop, you know, under there. And so right. this yeah. is what was really cool. Oh, yeah. When I when I worked at TI, yeah, I, I had like five different computers. Yeah. yeah, I had like five different computers, but every desktop was the same because they were all under Dropbox. Right, yeah. And so I could right. go from, in all the toolbars I showed you earlier, well, actually the, the bottom ones were all the same. The top ones weren't because those were computer specific, right? But the bottom ones, yeah. all those folders, every folder under there is to Dropbox, under, right. under Dropbox. So yeah. everything was the same. Yeah, and it just saved me so much time and getting confused, you know. But yeah, it's it's a it saves a lot of time. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the desktop's an important folder. It's where, at least for me, it's where all if I'm working on something, it's on the desktop. <laughs> right, and that was <laughs> my problem. Was like I would save it to my desktop and then come home, and I'm like, crap. You know, I save it to my desktop at work, <laughs> yeah, and this yeah, way, yeah. I get home and it's on my desktop. You know, yeah, and I'm like, hey, yeah, it's, it's there. That folder, yeah, why not? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Leo. This was okay, yeah. fascinating. Absolutely. Really, uh, you know, Opus is such a, an amazing program, and I'm, I think I'm going to switch over to having it as my default browser. I mean, they're actually, <laughs> um, and I saw it as a tool, but maybe you can help me real quickly. How would I assign like a hotkey to get the the path to the selected file? Uh, put that I'm on the clipboard. Think- there is one by default, so that you can obviously change it. Yeah, so in the edit menu, copy full path names. Control Shift C is the default hotkey, and that runs. And the, the the basic command is that the UNC on the end is if you're on a network share, it will convert it into the. Slash oh my slash god, slash that is share. hilarious! I actually yeah. wrote a script that would do that because <laughs> yeah. at work, my uh, counterparts in like China and stuff, they had mapped out Drive, and it was different and. This was how yeah, I worked around that. That's the exactly where it came from because it was. Well, it's not if it's just you at home, you, right. you know, the right. X colon whatever is probably X colon on all your machines. But if you're in a uh, big work environment, no one else is going to have that drive maps. But yeah. unless you all map the same things, um, yeah. And this this uh, command can do a bunch of other stuff. You can you can apply a regular expression search to replace on what you're sticking cool. on the clipboard, and you can you can say I just want the names, not the not the paths or, or that kind uh-huh. of thing. Um, but yeah, just going. So I edit and copy full path names and just uh, okay. put whatever right, hotkey you want there. Yeah. The, the, the other I, thing about the, the yeah. uh, hotkeys is, so if, if you do choose one, like I'll, I forgot what it was already up. <laughs> I'll set that to control K. If you choose one that uh, conflicts, they'll go, yeah. that will turn red and the other one will go red. So you can. Oh, interesting. It doesn't just overwrite it. Okay. That's good, I guess, because yeah, yeah. it didn't force you to go. And, yeah, and go and fix it. Yeah, um, but, and I yeah, take it neither one really works right. while that happens. I'm not sure which one it will choose. There's probably some priority okay. rule, but um, yeah, I've, I wouldn't. Re- I wouldn't depend on it. <laughs> so yeah, gotcha. you, and you can just turn right. it. Like, oh, that's it, awesome! The, uh, toolbar ones. You know you that know, that, you that is my toolbar. I'll just turn it off. Right, um, that's great because uh, again, it might be something you want just temporarily, and, and yeah. you'll forget what it was on the other one. So this kind of yeah. gives you a history. Yeah. yeah. And you, and you can obviously you can just delete it as well. Gotcha. And there's, yeah. I guess I should say the so where it says the hotkey name in the actual menu, that isn't derived from here. It's it's part of the menu label, so you can just delete it. Oh, okay. It. Yeah, it's it's not automatic because in some places I think I might be wrong, but I think sometimes we we tell you what the hotkey is in the menu, but the actual key is coming from somewhere else. Right. Probably in the, I think in the uh, the photo viewer because that's got its own. Uh, this has its own toolbar at the top, and this is also editable. And a lot of these commands, well, the, I mean, this, this menu itself is optional, but you still want things like uh, like plus and minus to uh-huh. change the size. Those those come from here, I think. Okay. And those, I don't know, it is defined there. I don't know. <laughs> They're probably yeah. somewhere it's where it's on the menu, but it's not actually defined there. Right, it's, I gotcha. It's, yeah. uh, no, it's, 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 they're two separate things. Right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. This was uh, okay, a yeah. very cool. I, I think uh, a lot of people, again, this is, I, I think people way underestimate how much time they actually spend in, you know, a file explorer or something looking at files yeah. on the computer. And if we spend so much time in it, why not have a tool that actually does so much more for you and yeah. makes it 
it works I'm the way different. you want it to work, right? That's the thing. Yeah. You can customize it like crazy. So I think it is quite a neglected thing because people just they're just so used to they're just so used to clicking so much, you know. Well, and, and, well, click, yeah. click, click, click. Why is not just have a button that takes you straight there? Oh, and we live in the now, like, oh, I, I don't have time. To, I need to get it done now, you know, and I don't have time to make a button. You're like, you don't have yeah. a minute to make a button you're going to use for the next five years. You know, like it's yeah. just take a little <laughs> yeah. time to slow down. So you're faster, you know, on everything else. That's, that's, yeah, I, I might, I actually own, I think it's work harder, not smarter.com. Um, I haven't done anything with it, but I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's my motto or sorry, work good. smarter, not harder. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. There's obviously trade-offs. Sometimes you make things that you don't use, but but yeah, it will save you a lot of time. Uh, and I, I I get so frustrated. I'm on a, if I'm on another machine like a, a new PC or one that's not gonna you know one that's just gonna be playing video or something, I still install Opus on it straight away because it's yeah, so sure. Just yeah. just trying to install the, the other software on there. It's like right. uh, I'm so sick. Of you know, you're gonna need it at some point. Home. Well, and that was actually. I, which I appreciate you showing me though, the whole backup stuff, because then if, when you do have, you know, you configure it the way you want it, and then basically you can port that to other computers, right? Very easily. Yeah, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes you may want to change one or two bits and that's, that's where it's nice right. that everything is, a, everything is a file. So you can export your whole right. config and then you have maybe one or two files that you replace. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That you don't keep shared synced. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you've, so you have, you have that granularity. And even within the files, you know, it's mostly XML. I think that there's one or two binary files, uh, but it's fairly peculiar stuff that you wouldn't want to edit anyway. So you can go in there and search and replace if you really want to. I mean, it's, it should be a sort of not a last resort, but you should have a good reason to edit them directly. I think uh, otherwise you might cause a problem, but you can do it. You know, it's a, it's all, it's an option. <laughs> Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much. This was fascinating. Okay, yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks very Take much. Bye. Cheers.